Uh, yes, hello. A very warm welcome to all of you uh, to this talk about the Houses of Religions in Putalam, Sri Lanka on this side, and the House of Religions in Bern on this side. We have separated a little bit, so you have uh, a clear identification who is who in this game. Uh, they will talk about the significance of a house of religions in each context, in Sri Lanka and in Bern. It's quite different. Uh, you will find some information on your seat. There is a, a little flyer about the two houses. Please make sure that you all have one. There you find also all the names of the participants. Uh, and the flyer is also the invitation to uh, the workshop tomorrow in, uh, in the Hotel Leonardo. So, the moment now is a kind of sneak preview uh, to the workshop of tomorrow, who is more interactive. I propose that we will have now uh, a little round of introductions. So you have an idea who is who here. I am Heinz Bichsel. I am uh, head of department of Ecumenical Affairs, Mission, International Cooperation and Migration uh, from the Church of Bern, Jura Soloturn. I am Father Kennedy Fernando from Sri Lanka, Catholic priest. Buddhist. Yeah, <coughs> Sri Lanka, Buddhist monk, I am in the um, uh, Puttalam district uh, temple. Thank you. My name is Sundar Rama Kurukal. I am from Sri Lanka. I represent Hindu communities. I am Maulavi Abdullah Mahmoud Alim, executive committee members. Muslim Theologians Council, Sri Lanka, and co-president, Putlam District Inter-Religious Committee. I am Chanuka Karnaranna from Sri Lanka. I am co coordinator, uh, House of Religion. My name is Karin Mikituk. I am the director of the House of Religion Dialogue of Cultures in Bern. Yes. Yeah, my name is Sasi Kumar Tarmalingam. I'm coming from Bern, also from uh, Home of Religion. I'm the staff there. I'm the, I'm the chief priest uh, from Bern Shiva Temple. I am Bante Anruta. Uh, I'm uh, re uh, House of Religion representing the Buddhist community in uh, House of Religion Bern, originally from Sri Lanka. My name is Angela Bichl-Slatkovic. I'm a Roman uh, Catholic theologian working in the city of Bern, and I am delegated by my church for, uh, to the project in the House of Religion. Yes, I'm really very happy that this moment is possible because until the last moment we were not sure if it's possible to meet now uh, due to the situation in Sri Lanka. It's really very hurting for us to hear uh, about this difficult situation. I, I think it's important to begin uh, to reflect on this situation. What's happening now in Sri Lanka? Please, Father Kennedy. Sassi will begin. <laughs> Sassi will, sorry, Sassi will begin. So thank you. I am honored and humbled by this opportunity to attend this meeting, representing the Tamil Shiva Temple Hindu community in Switzerland as a Hindu priest. Today, our hope for a compassion and peaceful world, our country being challenged by war, there are cultural and religious conflict. Racism, 
sensibility and the risk of populism. Unfortunately, Sri Lanka to thus witness this third reality for the last five, 50 years. Trust and harmony among religious and major ethnic communities have been deteriorated and still there is on political resolution to the ethnic conflict and people have been polarized and divided along the ethnic and religious lines. The 2012 National Council in Sri Lanka with providers the most recent available that list the population as 72% Buddhist, 2,6% sent Hindus, 12% Hindus, 9,7% Muslims, 7,4% Christianity. According to the UN Peace Reporter for Freedom of Religion and Belief, Ahmed Shahid Said, that's the 2019, Estri Sunday bombing were followed by significant rise in intercontinental tension, specifically threatening members of creating religious minority groups and their place of worship and UN had recently halted on the government to take a approach to her instrument to Hatred and violence against members of minority. In this context, Sri Lanka popularity and multi-religious community needs inter-religious and cultural trust and peace buildings to promote peace and harmony from the current level to the government level, interreligious dialogue and openness solved the prominent. I strongly believe interreligious trust and bridge building solved the important pillar of peaceful and proper Sri Lanka. First, it solved start with the religious leaders and people on the ground. Therefore, I hope the host of religion project in Sri Lanka and similar initiative will provide it and necessary and urgently needed dialogue, peace, facility and open and genuine. Dialogues purpose with communities and their leaders. Thank you. Uh, this opportunity with kindly and strongly request all international and local institution, civil society to support this process for a peaceful and proper Sri Lanka. Thank you. So I'm going to speak about the current situation of our country. And uh, it's going to be a little bit hard for you to listen because we are going through a big crisis in Sri Lanka. The present political crisis in Sri Lanka began with the power struggle between the former president and the parliament of Sri Lanka. The country's foreign currency reserves had come down to zero last few months. Therefore, the people of Sri Lanka had to face shortage of fuel, gas, medicines, as well as skyrocketing of prices of good. That means very expensive to live in Sri Lanka. With the 
uh, salary that you are getting, you cannot live in Sri Lanka because things are very expensive in Sri Lanka. It was well by anti-government pro protest in Sri Lankan language. It says Aragale. Many children were there and protesting months and months and against the government. And these demonstrations really took the public and uh, they came out and they were able to chase the Prime Minister and also the President later on. This was a major struggle of the people against the government last few months. When Sri Lanka foreign currency shortage became a serious problem in early 2021, the government tried to limit them by banning imports of chemical fertilizer. That means no chemical fertilizers were there. Therefore, what happened to the country, they were asking people to use organic fertilizer. Finally, they did not yield the crop that they want to yield. Therefore, there were no um, uh, food in our country because they were not able to produce fruit in our country. So, Sri Lanka had to supplement its food stock from abroad, which moved its foreign currency shortages even worse. That means uh, we did not have enough money to buy even our food stuff. Therefore, we had to import them from other countries. So you don't have any money to buy anything from other countries also. So finally, we came to a place where we did not have anything for our people to live in our country. Therefore, people are facing multiple problems in their lives. So far, no solutions are found politically economically, socially, by any political party. Day by day, the situation, is, situation of the country is worsened and no, no solutions are found in the country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we heard yesterday from overlapping crisis in Lebanon, and I think there are also overlapping crises in, in Sri Lanka. Yeah. We, we heard... Uh, an economic crisis, uh, a political crisis, a social crisis, social and also a food, crisis, a food crisis. So the question is, what is uh, the role of a house of religions in such uh, a context? And how began the whole history of the house of religions in Sri Lanka? Please, Bante. So thank you. I can remember <coughs> it, it happened, you know, 2007 when I attend to the retreat, one of uh, yogis introduced about the house of religion in Bern. So then uh, they, some of members uh, came to meet me and invite to organize the Vesak program in House of Religion 2006 and 2007, like that. So in this period, so I could organize the Vesak program in Bern. Uh, it is a beginning to care um, and to know closely about this project, House of Religion, and inter intercultural, interreligious dialogue. So at that time, I was personally inspired about this. After that, we could organize Buddhist organizations, intercultural Buddhist association, burn, uh, to work in house of religion. So in this beginning, so then ourselves, we are part of this house in Bern. So we have the Buddhist center in house of religion. In the same time, we, I came to know the Sasi Kumar Tarmalingan, so as a Hindu priest uh, representing the Hindu temple in House of Religion, time to time we met, met several times. So one day we could sit together, discuss about the Sri Lanka. In the same time, we reflect what, uh, why don't we think to bring this project to Sri Lanka. 
So then we had these discussions, and after that, so we can share this information with our board members in House of Religion in Bern. In the same time, there are one association, Palmyra, who support to Sri Lanka. They are ready to help us. So with help of them, we went to Sri Lanka 2016 and organizes, organized the association Intercultural and Spiritual Home in Puttalam with the help of district uh, uh, secretary in Puttalam. So after that, we could get the land from the sec uh, secretary office from uh, Puttalam, uh, and then we could build house there. So one house with the help of all for uh, religions together. So we make uh, progress little by little, the ground level so to build the one house for all. And then we organize uh, several activities because uh, we came to know in the ground level in Sri, Lan Sri Lanka, the community has been divided like a school system, like a Muslim school, then Buddhist school, Christian school, like that. In ground level, it, um, it is uh, already divided. So then we want to make aware how we bring all together. So in the ground level, then uh, with the ins inspiring the project House of Religion, we can do a lot. So now we are already started, but there were many other problems like a corona situation and economic crisis. So it, uh, as we plan, it could not still success, hmm? but we are in the process. It is a big, very big step. We could attend this uh, summit and then we present our activities and all. Thank you. Yes, please, Father Kennedy, you will say a word about the challenges of the house. We already heard that it's in progress. It's a, it's a process, this house. Please, Father. In Sri Lanka, we have a major challenge from the very beginning, I think about 74 years. Whoever came to power, they want to divide the country and rule the country. And uh, politically and racially, and also religiously also. They want to divide the country and rule. So that was a major agenda of the political parties. People are living very peacefully during the time of life, but when there's a election, they, especially through the media and other medias, we were able to see a division is created in order to get the voters uh, the support for their party. So the religious division and also ethnic division and other divisions are the major cause uh, in our country, especially the party, political parties, they make use of this for winning elections. This is the major difficulty that we have in Sri Lanka, especially to bring together any religion or work together as one religion. Secondly, we have our school system. Our school system is divided by religion. Therefore, Catholic schools are there, Buddhist schools are there, Hindu schools are there, and also Muslim schools are there. So this is there for about 74 years, divided school system, and therefore, there's no way of learning the other religions in, their, uh, in the schools. Though they have subjects, religious subjects are there, there's no way of bringing together the religious experience of other people to uh, experience the other religion. So this is a major division we have in our country. And uh, I have been speaking about this many times, but still for all, we have this problem. The pro third problem is economic problem. Economic problem had uh, risen uh, recently uh, with this uh, government and political situation and people are really suffering. Therefore, they look at the religious leaders and the religious communities 
that they are not understanding the real problems of the country and the real problems of the country they are not understand the real problem but we speak actually we fight very hard because the politicians are really uh, over power in the situation of the country so our our response is there but they are more powerful than the religious communities and the religious leaders of the country and their voice is much more powerful finally i would say our challenge would be for the future because any political party would use this particular situation an economic crisis for their own game may be in different way we don't know what they are going to do therefore that would be the major uh, major thing that we have to really be careful as religious leaders and finally i would say uh, it is a success uh, in our country at putulam we fourth of us four of us are working together under one roof bringing and showing the people that we can work together as a religious community and bring peace and harmony among the people so far we have achieved that in our country and also and we were able to resolve many problems and also many situation which came up even after east attack we were able to solve that problem because of our uh, togetherness thank you thank you so much i think it's extraordinary that in your context it's possible to have a house of religions uh, that's not naturally possible that's re really a big work so we jump to burn uh, a very different context uh, we think always it's easier to build a house of religions in Bern, but I think there are also challenges there. Please, Karin. Thank you very much. It is built, so some channel challenges um, we made already, or we could over how to say uh, uh, overcome. The situation, of course, in Switzerland is totally different from the one um, in Sri Lanka. Um, I also think. Because of, just a minute, because um, time is very short now, I will not introduce the whole house, what it is, uh, how, we, how we work. I could tell a long time, but I brought some information in English and in the yearly report of last year in German. Um, and I'm here also afterwards um, to speak about. Just a few words about the challenges in Switzerland. I also think we have to work um, on overall um, social cohesion, religious, social, economic, and all cohesion in Switzerland. We have some challenges with racism and um, anti-Semitic or anti-Muslim uh, streamings who also try to divide um, society. Our house is an example to work against. We have a lot of school pupils who visit our house who are the first time in our house and they experience they, the first time in their life they are in a mosque or they are in a, a Hindu temple, they are in a Buddhist uh, center and they do different experiences. Maybe they have some um, uh, friends at school or also in the house. They know that they are, for example, um, Hindus and the first time they see something of another reality which is also possible in Switzerland also to get more close to f um, I'm convinced it's all my experience and my conviction um, that through encounter and that you really get in dialogue that you're interested that you ask somebody something you would never talk to in a bus our house is a place for these talks uh, to get in touch with each other. A lot of people also have mediation backgrounds, so if there are um, conflicts and challenges, um, many people like, let's sit down, please tell me your perspe perspective, please tell me your perspective, and then we can see where, where actually is the problem. Usually, it's, this is my experience, the problem, um, it's not the one who, which is told in the first uh, way, but uh, uh, more underlaying, but like this 
problems can be overcome. I'm also convinced that um, conflicts are there, something happens, some move can be taken instead of just uh, going aside and not going conflict and in touch with each other. That's it for the moment. Um, I will Thank hand you. over. Ah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I was to ask, yes, Antala, because we are in the assembly of the uh, Ecumenical Council of Churches, so of the World Council of Churches, so it's an ecumenical affair, and we have also an ecumenical affair within the House of Religions. So what are your challenges there in Bern? Yes, we, we are, are an ecumenical church in the House of Religions. Um, part of the projects are uh, eight don denominations. And of course, um, it's not so easy to share a church with so many Christian groups. We have um, conflicts also. And I will talk tomorrow a little bit about our tensions and our compromises. But um, the church is, uh, is very important for me and for uh, a lot of people because it's, it shows how diverse Christianity is. And we are convinced that we will be also in the interreligious dialogue that we will be a polyphonic Christian voice. That it is not allowed to, to be one, uh, a voice of one uh, denomination. We are diverse and we want to, to be heard polyphonic. The challenges, um, the House of Religions is also a place of intercultural um, dialogue and we are look we have one migration church it is the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and now we are looking for another migration church but uh, until now it it didn't work um, especially for charismatic churches it is the context of the house of religions that could be um, an obstacle a difficulty Another challenge is uh, how to build a community in an ecumenical church. And a major challenge is the asymmetry in the church because we, a few of us are paid and delegated for this work by their churches and other are not paid and have not many time resources. Thank you very much. And now I hand over uh, to you, Kagin, and to the discussion, please. Thank you very much. We are sure this was a small insight now. We want to tease you to visit our uh, workshop tomorrow at 5 p.m. Um, but I'm sure you have some questions. You can address any one of you, or maybe you address just particularly one person. Yes. Are there some questions or comments or reflections? Um, I'm, I'm wondering how the relationship is between the House of Religion in Sri Lanka and the House of Religion in Bern. Are there close connections or how is it? Okay, <laughs> um, I'm convinced after this e huge event, um, our connections will grow. This event here, we took it as a chance to get close again. As you heard, it started in the house. Um, but this will, that we meet now in person in Bern as well as here, and that we get in touch with each other personally, Yes, as I told before that I am convinced that encounter is uh, the solution. Um, 
it will go on um, and we, we will be in touch and exchange our experiences. Also the idea, we are not the only house of religions. There are others in the world with different concepts, but maybe there are also some places who could need a house of religion, <laughs> where different religions um, really practice and uh, encounter each other under one roof. Yes, uh, thank you for all of you. I come uh, from Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and I consider Jerusalem as the house of religions. <laughs> you know, but um, I want to ask really, is there a dialogue between whether in uh, Sri Lanka or Switzerland, Bern or uh, uh, in uh, Bhutan, over theology, or you are talking about human rights and values? Because I tell you where I come from, if I talk about theology, there is no way that we'll live together. Muslims, Christians, Jews, other. F but if we talk about citizenship, about that we are equal, there is a room for living. Please let me know. So our dialogue is not on the religious level. That means not the theology or uh, the concepts. Our dialogue is coming together and working as a one family, all the four religions, and in common concepts, especially with regard to uh, human rights, and also poverty, and also during COVID-19, we were able to conduct some programs together in every religious house and sharing uh, masks. Uh, and also, we were able to celebrate uh, Christmas together. All the four communities came together for Christmas. And also New Year celebration in Sri Lanka. New Year celebration is a very special one. And uh, Muslims, Hindus and uh, Catholics and everybody came together. And also many other situations, uh, especially agricultural farming projects were there. And uh, we were able to train some people and also music classes were there for all the four religions and uh, we were able to achieve a lot uh, with regard to sharing our own experiences rather than theological and uh, uh, moreover uh, the other conceptual world. Thank you. Um, I'd like to give an answer from Bern too to this question. Um, we have both, of course, also the, the legal and societal economic um, exchange, but also on theological, um, maybe, um, how to say, sometimes it's uh, similar, sometimes it's a bit different, <laughs> and how it is. In, we always want to show that there are different denominations f coming out of one, maybe, tradition. So, for example, we have podiums like this, like, for example, for people with four different denominations, and they discuss themselves the differences and the. Um, uh, and similarities. And this is like, this is kind of a, also a, a really a theological dialogue, an inner religious theological dialogue. Of course, we also have inter religious uh, dialogues. Um, in my experience, the inner religious are far more challenging than the inter religious dialogues. Um, sometimes the Jewish and the Christians and the Muslims, sometimes we have a, um, a common studying of the Bible, a text, the scripture. And in the church, sometimes we make our uh, differences explicit and we, ha we invite to a discussion about the meanings of pictures, for example, in our different traditions. So we have, from time to time, we have also theological uh, discussions. Okay. I'm Gerti Nützel. I come from Berlin and I have two questions, but uh, they are very near. Um, do you have um, coming, uh, do you celebrate also national uh, events together? 
Do you, for example, if sad events or, or glad events, and uh, do you have something to remember your common history in, in Sri Lanka as people of different religions? Because I think this is also very important to, ha to, to tell us, uh, to have a narrative about the, the common history of the religions. How uh, normally, we have uh, 4th of February National Day, and uh, all the four religi religious leaders uh, come together with the government, and we celebrate the 4th of, uh, 4th of February, our Independence Day. And that is one of the things that we celebrate together. Um, we Normally, we have uh, national... Uh, uh, dancers and also uh, national events are there. All the four religions uh, and also the uh, special Tamil, Singhala and uh, other communities, they have their own cultures. They bring uh, these cultures together to celebrate the national day. So or not only four religions, but also the other cultures also come together to celebrate this day. And they have their dances. Uh, Tamil Bharata Dhatyam and uh, uh, Sri Lankan uh, Udarata Natum, that means uh, the upper country dances and not so many things are there. And that is a wonderful day to celebrate. Thank you. Uh, uh, I just want to uh, make a comment. Um, I've seen you for the first time uh, I know you personally, but as an organization which I've been working from Puttalama. And I'm also not from Puttalama, I'm also not from Bern. I'm uh, speaking as an outsider in the sense, for the moment. Uh, if this relationship ought to blossom and bear fruit, we need to find out as to why we need uh, interreligious uh, relationship like this. For me, um, there are certain pillars on which you need to build your life together with Bern and Sri Lanka. One is all religions speak about peace. You say, Muslims say, Salam Alaikum. Uh, we say, Peace of the Lord be with you. And uh, Buddhism is a, is a religion of peace. Hindu, uh, it's a religion of peace. Uh, so that is a right, that is the breath of a human being to live. That peace that every religion gives, we need to own it, we need to capture it, and we need to see it blossoms and bears fruit. The second is, according to my faith, my religion, we are created for relationships. We are created for relationships, right? We have all been created in God's holy image. I may be a Christian, you may be a Muslim, you may be a Hindu, you may be a Buddhist, but the holy image of God in me demands that I respect and venerate the holy image of God in each other. So that is the connecting point in which we live. And thirdly, um, we have a right, our basic right to live, and that is covered by our moral values. So religion has to protect the moral values of all human beings. Now in my country, in Sri Lanka, um, you know, the MPs are given liquor licenses, you know, as a, a, a way of earning money, and that is really killing the lives of, of school children. You know, I mean, everywhere you can see a, a liquor bar. And in, in the eastern province, from where I come in, uh, 85,000 liters of liquor is consumed per day. Right. So, as you come together, you have to live and fight for humanity, and humanity's liberation and humanity's existence. Thank you. Thank you for this comment. Anyone would like to add something? Thank you very much. Last question. 
Hi, uh, my name's Catherine Cash. I work with the Freedom of Religion or Belief uh, learning platform, developing uh, resources to help uh, communities uh, learn about living together, you could say, or <laughs> to practice doing it. Um, I have a question about how um, the art of living together and respecting one another's rights comes down uh, to the community level uh, from the leadership level and how we enable that to happen. And I, I've got one tip, which is a course material that we've developed on for just that, called the Local Change Makers course, uh, which is going to be available in Sinhala and Tamil by the end of next year. Just saying. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the first time, um, um, yeah, first time my friend Monk we have worked uh, maybe 10 years for the project Home of Religions, but we have no directly dialogue with, uh, because we have a 30 years uh, war in Sri Lanka. I'm coming from also Sri Lanka, but I'm Tamils and uh, Hindus. He's a Sinhalese and Buddhist. So one time he asked me, uh, please, can you not drink one tea with me at the table? Yeah, so why not? We we'll take one tea. And our communication uh, language is... Uh, uh, German and English, but uh, Sri Lanka is one small land. Only two languages is there, Sinhalese and Tamils. But I don't understand ta Sinhalese. He don't understand another word, <laughs> Tamils. Uh, but uh, uh, after the tea, um, so long time we are talking about the uh, problem in Sri Lanka and conflict. He asked me, can you know, uh, hope uh, we can bring this project to Sri Lanka? This is a two person with a dialogue. But we are bring the project to Sri Lanka to Colombo. Uh, in Colombo, we are um, try and try with the capitals peoples. But he has uh, coming from um, any um, NGOs or um, secret police, <laughs> anything. So we have the, we change the idea. We are go to Putalam. Putalam is a one local area. The, there he has um, so we are um, the one day at night. No, at night. Four, uh, four hours, we are talking with a monk there. He's a, uh, so for me, he's a very lightful, uh, powerful monk. Uh, we have uh, first time uh, four hours talking with one monk. Uh, and my uh, friend, he can all, um, my language, Tamils, and to speak to English, um, Singlish uh, translation. Uh, after we can, um, okay, we can do that. So we have uh, found the project in the local, from the big area, from Bern, to land in the local there. And we have uh, with uh, uh, Maulana, the um, imam, and priest, and monk. So after with this re relationship, now is a very uh, possible, and he come here in the Karlsruhe. This is a uh, very important uh, dialogue with two persons. Yeah, the, uh, the question is, um, uh, example, at the 18th of September, uh, we invite all uh, Sri Lankan people who are living in, uh, in Switzerland, uh, Buddhists, uh, Muslims, and Hindus, and Christianity. So we can explain there. And um, 18th of September at evening, we are founded one home of, uh, um, one, one ho uh, elderly home for Tamils in Switzerland. So come all peoples there, and we are explaining what is our project in Sri Lanka. So can we bring for all peoples? Actually, uh, we were planning in Putlam. Uh, your whole idea is there in Putlam. The leaders wanted to have a secondary leaders and the tertiary leaders and also and uh, uh, children also. So what we planned there was uh, we were able to bring some uh, uh, middle-aged people and also young people and school children and we are trying to bring maybe 
there were children, those who are aged around 12, 13. So we may be able to bring down this leadership. I've always told them we need to build up leadership with this concept. Then only we may be able to respond to the whole country. Then in a small way, if we are going to bring it down, and uh, we have changed uh, multiple people and a lot of people, and also they may be able to contribute the same interreligious idea in their own lives and also maybe for the next generation. Thank you. Thank you. I permit myself a commentary because uh, I was thinking about the House of Religions in Bern and I think it's not a product of the church leaders in Bern. It was uh, sometimes a little bit difficult to convince the church leaders that they participate also in the idea. So it's really a, a, a project of the communities in this sense. Uh, from Bethlehem, there's another question, sorry. Thank you, really I commend your courage. I know there has been exchange of information between Sri Lanka and Switzerland. The question I have, what is easier, where it is easier to live together, in Bern or in uh, Butalam? And the other question, how you deal with the spoilers who don't like to see you together? Um, I try an answer from Bern's side. Um, I cannot give that one to your first question. <laughs> um, but to the second one, the spoilers, like there are always disturbing voices, um, but much less than we, than we actually expect in the history of our association. There could have been a lot of things who could have happened or when it was re new built, um, we didn't know what's going to happen when the doors are open. But there were very little um, b bad comments um, on the house. And we just keep on to send our message of, of encounter, of being in dialogue, of being in respectful dialogue on an eye level and to really listen to each other. Um, so I'm also ready to listen to spoilers. So if they want to have a dialogue, please sit, let's sit on the table. I think at the very beginning of beginning this house in uh, Portland, there had been a petition written by uh, some people to the uh, government agent of Portland saying not to have this house in Portland because they were thinking uh, there will be something, all these poor religions are coming together and do something. And uh, that was the first thing. And secondly, when we started this project, and after laying the foundation, the villagers were looking at uh, this project as something uh, very dangerous and they were opening their eyes like this and what is happening there? Why these people are coming together? All the four religions are there in the land and they are laying foundation and they are cutting the uh, foundation uh, and uh, what is this? Why they are there? What's going to happen? And uh, what is this new thing? Why these four, four people are together and doing something? And uh, we have answered them with positive mind. And uh, now there's a big house there. It's not a big house, but uh, in Sri Lankan way, about uh, it is a new beginning. And we have a house there. And we have our own programs in that house. Thank you. Or I don't know. Is there one more question? I know it's five minutes um, over the time. But, okay, one, one last. Yeah, not a question. I'm also from Sri Lanka. I work uh, in the Vatican Dicastery for Interreligious uh, Dialogue. I'm very happy to see this initiative. And uh, I just want to thank uh, the organizers and also uh, when it comes to interreligious dialogue, as you all know, there are four types of dialogue, theological, 
spiritual and dialogue of life and dialogue of action. So here we see, especially dialogue is uh, dominated by elites. Mm -hmm. Often uh, there are discussions, but it doesn't come to the grassroots level. We, are, we need a real attitudinal change. It remains at the uh, elite level. But here we see a concrete example, and also um, a diaspora uh, in a, a dialogue, because people, when migrate, they bring also their problems to uh, joys and happiness, as well as problems to other countries, and then they live with uh, wounds. Here we see how they have healed their wounds, and with that healing, how they try to heal the country's wound. It's a very good uh, initiative. I congratulate. I'm very happy to see this initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Shall I do the closing? <laughs> Thank you all for your interest of coming here, of being interested and get in dialogue with us. Please go on with that. We are here now. It's the networking space. And we are here also tomorrow at 5 p.m. in the Hotel Leonardo, Leonardo Room Turlach. 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 <laughs> so tomorrow we will talk more. Uh, it will be mentioned. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so there is, uh, again, opportunity to meet us. Um, and we will go in more deep in the subject. We have some hypotheses we'd like to discuss also on dialogue and encounter. And there's a last point. I will thank you all for being here. Thank you so much and all the best for your project in Sri Lanka and in Bern. And there is uh, a little gift uh, from the Swiss Protestant Church, a light a light for your work in Sri Lanka, in the House of Religions, and a light also for Bern. Uh, put, please put this light in a on a visible place, that all the people can see this interreligious dialogue and are invited to participate in the interreligious dialogue. Thank you so much. <laughs>